unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. The half has never yet been told. Praise the Lord. We just want to say it's good to have Brother Rick and Sister Linda back. We miss them. Amen. Uh, I'm not feeling well. It's no fun. Amen. But we're glad that they're uh, getting, getting, getting there. All right. Amen. And they said they're, they're going to make it. Amen. Good to see the Marks from Megan here with us. Amen. Good to have uh, Dennis and Laura back with us. Amen. Uh, my Lord had some testing there. And good to have Phoebe back with us. Amen. Glad that you're here this morning. Good to see Bobby and Terry back after a vacation. They're all rested and relaxed and ready to take on the world, right? Amen. Glad, glad for everyone that's here. I know, like I said, over the next few weeks, you know, we're going to be gone. Some of the folks will be gone. So we're in that vacation mode. Uh, but we miss folks. It's good to get away. Good to get back. But always good, no matter where we go, to know that we're in the presence of God. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Acts, chapter number 2 this morning. Hallelujah. I don't know, it's this, this week, uh, there's messages that just seems like uh, that the Lord uh, just all week long kind of gives you these nudges in this direction and He works in your heart uh, as a pastor. And it just seemed like everywhere I turn this week that um, the whole focus was on Pentecost. And uh, knowing that it is Pentecost Sunday, now I, I want to focus on that a little bit today in the message. And I want to, by the grace of God, be able to bring about the message in such a way that you'll realize how important Pentecost is and the move of the Spirit of God in our life. Praise God. Just kind of hang on to Acts chapter number 2. I'm going to Speak for a little bit, and then we're going to jump in. Uh, well, let me just read a couple of verses, and I'm going to jump and read more verses. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 2, <coughs> the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with uh, one, one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were filled with, amen, the Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, we know that they began to speak in other tongues. Probably across most of America this morning, in a lot of churches, amen, there will be many denominations that will be celebrating Pentecost, even though they're not Pentecostal in denominational title. And uh, as we look at Pentecost, uh, you know, has, has anyone ever looked at you and said, where do you go to church? And you may say, uh, well, uh, I, I go to Miracle Revival Church in Lycans. And uh, they may say, Miracle Revival Church. Yes, it's an independent Pentecostal church. By the way, Sister Beth's not feeling well, so young people, that's why I didn't dismiss you to Children's Church. She's not here this morning. So enjoy Pentecost with us, all right? Amen. So if anyone uh, wondered why, amen. So looking at Pentecost, amen, Pentecost, amen. I need to tell you that I believe that there's thousands and even millions of individuals that are Pentecostal across America and across the globe. And as we celebrate Pentecost, amen, I need to tell you that what we're most importantly celebrating is it that some people will say, oh, I know, and you know those Pentecostals, you like making music and clapping your hands, and you like raising your hands, and are you the folks that speak in other tongues? You know, you get that. Uh, what is Pentecost? But, but I, I want to tell you what Pentecost is. And yes, I believe that I, I love clapping my hands. I love that part of worship. I love raising my hands. Let me tell you, we were, oh, we were worship and we were contemporary when worship and contemporary wasn't even cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we love worship. But, it, but it's, it's more than just oh, clapping your hands. 
That's not Pentecost itself, although that may be a characteristic. And it's not just raising your hands and, and worshiping God, although that is characteristic. I do believe that it, it is a, a speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. That, that is Pentecost. But, but, but I need to tell you, I, I think that when we look at Pentecost, I believe that Pentecost is, is, is this. I believe that Pentecost, amen, has principle. I believe that it has power. I believe that it has purpose. I believe that it has precepts, amen. When you look at being Pentecostal, you look at the birthday of the church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. When did the church come into existence? When they were in the upper room in one accord, the Bible says there they were, all of them, they were in one place and in one mind, and they were seeking the promise that was from God. And there the wind of God began to blow in, glowing tongues like as fire set upon them. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And from that upper room, those 120 go, and they changed the world by preaching the gospel of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ through His death and crucifixion and His resurrection and the Spirit of God. It is the birth of the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know there's more to it. We'll look more at it this morning. But I want you to know that. Amen. More than hand clapping. More than lifting our hands. More than music. Amen. Uh, uh, some people may say, well, uh, Pentecostals, you know, singing, praising, clapping. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's more principle, purpose, perception. I love, I got to introduce Brother David this week to a friend of mine that I got to meet few years ago, and, and uh, he was living in New Jersey and uh, with a friend, and he was living a life very high, and uh, in many ways, his friend's father had passed away. He was a multi-millionaire. He said he and his friend had anything that they wanted. He said they had drugs. They lived a life of drugs. They lived a life of just uh, uh, unfaithfulness, relationships, sensuality. And he said one day, his friend said to him, what do you want to buy? And he said, of all things that he chose to buy, he said, I want a Bible. And he said he began to read the Bible. And he said he, he realized that in his denomination that he grew up in, that wasn't the Bible. That it wasn't lining up with the Bible. And he said all of a sudden he came to the knowledge of Pentecost. And he realized that Pentecost lined up with the Word of God when nothing else could deliver him from drugs, when nothing else could deliver him from living a loose and a radical lifestyle that was lived by the, 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 the flesh. He said the Spirit of God changed him, amen, and encompassed him. The power of the resurrection was made known to him by the Spirit of God, and he got filled with the Holy Ghost, and it changed his life. Let me tell you, amen. Amen. It doesn't have to do with good music. It doesn't have to do with hand clapping. It doesn't have to do with just raising your hand. It has to do with the Spirit of God making the message of the gospel real to us, and it will change us. Right. Amen. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. That means they were one people with one desire. The Bible says in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven uh, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And all uh, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And others mocking say these men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and he said unto them, you, you men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known to you this day and hearken to, to my words. These men are not drunken as you suppose, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. These men aren't drunk as, as you see them. Uh, but he went on to say, but this is, uh, it has come to pass in the last day.
day saith God that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Amen. <coughs> all of a sudden, amen, things begin to happen because of an experience in the upper room. Amen. The church needs an upper room experience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm saying the church needs an upper room experience. Amen. Where we come together and in one mind and in one accord. I'm not talking about how we're going to uh, create a project or build or reach out or, or whatever it may be. I'm not talking about the, the next get together. I'm not talking about the next black light. Amen. I'm talking about a coming together of the people mm -hmm. of God where we're in one mind and in one accord. Amen. And we want to see the promise of God mm -hmm. fulfilled in us. Hallelujah. We want to see the promise of God fulfilled in us. God still has promises. It's for you and your yep. children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. <laughs> it's for every generation. Amen. I want to move with the Holy Ghost in my life. Amen. Amen. I want it in my girl's life. Amen. I want it in your life. I want it in the, in the Upper Dolphin area. Amen. I, I want to have good music. I like good music. I like good singing. I like worship. Amen. I like clapping. But I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I need the empowerment of the Spirit of God in my life that changes me. Amen. That makes the power of the resurrection so real that I'm saved. I don't just feel Him around me, but He's in me. Amen. And there's power to live life in victory. Amen. Amen. God wants you to live life victorious. Amen. It's not a motto. It's not a thinking. It's not a mindset. Amen. But it's an experience and the power of the Holy Ghost that will change each of our lives. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pentecost. Amen. Would be more important all around the world than anything else. It was the birth of the church. It was a globalization of the gospel. It was a change to humanity. Amen. I don't want to just celebrate Pentecost Sunday. I want to experience it every day. Amen. Pentecost. Pentecost. I, I, I want to paint a picture for you if I could. Kind of a timeline of the Bible. And I know that I'm going to skip over several things, but, but, but there's some highlights and important things that I'm going to share with you this morning. I want you to think this morning, and I know I've already focused Tuesday a little bit already this morning, on Adam and Eve. And we are all the descendants of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. We've inherited <coughs> their wickedness. You may say, listen, I'm not a wicked person. Listen, each of our hearts are desperately deceitful and wicked. Mm -hmm. Because we've inherited it from Adam and Eve. There's none of us that are good. So Adam and Eve fell in the garden. So I want you to imagine that here it is that for over 2,000 years, almost 2,500 years, that God speaks to man now through his consciousness and audibly because there's no written word. <coughs> they didn't have a Bible. But God still had a plan for a relationship with man. He still had a plan for restoration. He still had a plan for his spirit to dwell in him. Uh -huh. Remember when Adam was there and everything was fully functional? I mean, his body was perfect and God breathed into him the breath of life. And then I believe God breathed into him the Spirit of God, the Holy uh -huh. Ghost. There he was and he was living. It was a fall of man caused him to lose that. And so here it is that uh, uh, the Bible, uh, some years past, uh, 2,500 years past, we see that uh, there's a man that, that his, his name is Isaac and God gives him a son named Jacob. You'll know uh, uh, Isaac's father, Abraham. He was a righteous man who loved God, who was noted to be a friend of God. Hey, when what a testimony. And when my life is done, you know, I'm at that middle age of life. So, you know, you do that reflecting in life. 
You look back and you think, man, I made some stupid choices and mistakes. You know, uh, you know, you're young and you're invincible, and you know, you you you, you sometimes fly by the seat of your pants without sometimes being as intentional uh, as you should. Uh, but 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 when you get to the state, and some of you are, you know where I'm at. Some of you are farther than me. So and you know, you you, you look at your life, and there's something that I want my life to be noted as. I, I want folks to say, well, he was a friend of God. Listen, I don't want someone to say I live by rules and regulations. I don't want them to say that I was a pastor. You know, I, I don't need that title. I need someone to say in my character, he was a friend of God. Mm -hmm. He loved God. He was a friend of God. So here it is, Abraham being a friend of God. He has a son, Isaac, and his son, Isaac, has a son named J Jacob. And, and so uh, uh, Isaac eventually has a grandson named Jacob. I should say it that, that way. And so we find that, that, that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob took his family. He lived close to Egypt. There it was. The, 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 the people, uh, his descendants, became captives of, uh, of Egyptian, uh, 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 just a uh, uh, oppression. And, and we know the story well because it's been rehearsed in our ears. Uh, we know how that, that finally God raised up a man named Moses who was going to lead God's children out of Egypt. And as he was leading them out of Egypt, uh, uh, God tells, uh, goes to Moses and he, he speaks to Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh refuses to let God's people go. So there's plagues. There's the water that's turned to blood. There's insects, cattle die. There's walls. There's darkness. And after the nine plagues, uh, the, 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 the end, uh, there, there's something that Moses goes and he talks to the people. He wants them to get a land and it needs to be a perfect land. They'll watch the land. We know how the story goes as, as they watch the land and then on the night before that they're to leave uh, Egypt, God's going to provide them miraculous deliverance. They're to take the blood of the lamb and they're apply it to the doorpost. Then that final plague uh, 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 of, of the eldest died. Uh, what, what, what happened? The blood is applied to the doorpost. Uh, there's great mourning there in Egypt. And so Pharaoh says, go, just go, go. And so uh, there they are. They're done in their robe and their clothes that they can go. So God's people begin to march. And they go toward the Red Sea, the Red Sea in front. Pharaoh's army behind and heels on either side. But God miraculously opens up the Red Sea and he provides a way for his people. Let me just tell you once again, you think you're standing in a bad situation. Amen. Would you trust the God of deliverance? Amen. The Red Sea may be before you, Pharaoh's army behind you, and hills on either side, and you may feel like you are trapped, but let me tell you this morning, and I'm speaking to someone, God wants to provide deliverance in a miraculous way for you if you will allow the Spirit of God to go before you and open up the waters, God will take care of you. So here it is that they're on the other side of, uh, of the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army drowns. However much water it is, I don't know. But it is miraculous that God provides provision mm -hmm. for His people. <coughs> Remember, there's been no written law to live by or to read. But 50 days after Passover, 50 days after Passover, Moses finds himself in the mountain, called outside. And then God gives him faith. Do you know what 50 is? Pentecost. Mm -hmm. There's the first Pentecost. God says, I'm reaching out with my word to have relationship with man. I'm reaching out. Amen. Before that, it's your conscience. It was your guidance and direction. Amen. But now, everything that they did was built upon the law. The foundation of their relationship with God is built upon the law. They read it daily. They taught it to their children. It was important to them. Amen. So Pentecost, I need to tell you, Amen doesn't have anything to do with music. Amen. It all has to do with the blood. It has all to do with the deliverance of God. It has all to do with God reaching out and wanting relationship with mankind. Could I jump forward now to the New Testament? Amen. We find John in his gospel and he gives the presentation of Jesus. He says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Yep. 
Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. The Jewish people are still celebrating Passover. Amen. It's a very much a part of their life, Brother David. They're thankful for the law that God's given them. It's become very ritual to them, Terry, but they're still celebrating it. Do you know anything that surrounds the whole crucifixion of Jesus Christ? Amen. The same week that he was crucified is the same week as Passover. Mm -hmm. Amen. God was speaking loud and clear, Brother Rick. Amen. That I've given you the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. Amen. That will lead you to deliverance. That will guide your life. And so, Sister Rachel, the Lamb of God, amen, suspended on a cross between the earth and heaven, gives his life. Three days later, Sister Tiffany, the man of God, the Son of God, amen, laid in the tomb and he's resurrected, Brother Josh, all around Passover. Amen. You know what happens later, Sister Tina? They're celebrating Pentecost. And so here it is. Why does Easter and, and Pentecost Sunday change every year? Do you know what? Because whenever Easter falls, 50 days later, we'll celebrate Pentecost. Yep. Here it was. The first Pentecost, God gave him the law. Relationship with mankind. The second Pentecost. Amen. Here it is. Amen. I love what the Word of God says. Let me share several verses. Amen. The promise is this. Uh, uh, the Word of God uh, says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your open men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. A new heart will I give you, uh, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will talk, take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and keep you in my judgments and do, do them. And he said, uh, the, the, the spirit of truth, uh, you will know him for he will uh, live in you. In you. In you. Pentecost is all about the spirit of God living in us. Mm -hmm. So Jesus and the book of Acts you're the followers. And, 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 and he, he says to them before his ascension, and when he had spoken, uh, let me jump back, Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, but you shall receive power. Amen. That's miracle work and power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. That's the power, the Holy Ghost. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. So, Sister Tina, they watched him. There he goes up to the palace. He's gone, Sister Jane. And so immediately, how long has Jesus been on the earth? 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. And so, he says, I want you to go with Terry and wait for the power. For the rape, they had no clue. In 10 days, what will come. But at Pentecost 50, Sister Tina, there they were in the upper room, and they were waiting, and they were tearing on the promise of God. And I want you to think about something. I've been around long enough in my life where I've been in prayer meetings, and I've been in services, amen, where folks are seeking God, and there's that rise of worship and prayer, and there's a fall. Rise of worship. So here it is. It's the rise and the fall, Brother Dennis. Amen. They were just like us. They were just like us. The rise and fall, but they were there. They were in one place, in one court. What would happen? What would happen if everybody here this morning would get in one place as we are? Amen. And then we would get in one accord. God, I need a move of your spirit. Hallelujah. I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe it will encourage us. It will challenge us. It will empower us. It will give us victory. Amen. I believe that we would evangelize the world in a greater way. We would be more effective. I think our personal devotions would be greater. I believe that our, our, our fervency in prayer would be greater. I believe the miracles that we would see would be greater. I believe that it would change the course of our community. It would start in our homes and our families. Amen. And it would just Amen. begin to have this ripple effect out everywhere because the Spirit of God was moving. Because that's what happened in Acts chapter number 2. 
Amen. There's some things that I notice. Amen. Uh, 50 days after Passover. Amen. A after this crucifixion. Amen. God began to fill men with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It wasn't a law that was written by their Eli upon stone tablets. Amen. But God would begin to write grace and mercy and His love and His mm -hmm. law and His work upon the hearts of men. Listen, if we simply read the Word of God and we try to wrap it around our mind and our life and live by it without the Spirit of God, we will utterly fail. Mm -hmm. Amen. But when we allow the Holy Ghost to be in us and God to take the pages of His Holy Word and begin to write it upon our heart, it will change us. It will change the character and our reputation of who we are. We will love the unlovable. Amen. We will live holy when no one else is watching. We will do the right thing. There will never be a question why. We'll respond appropriately. God will help us in our life. Amen. And we'll expand mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God help every one of us to experience Pentecost. Amen. Help every one of us to experienced Pentecost. There they were. They were in the upper room and they began to speak with other tongues. They said, Brother Phil, that, that scares me. There's nothing about the things of God to be fearful. Yeah. Be respectful and honoring but not fearful. We don't need to fear God. Hallelujah. He loves us. I never want my girls to ever fear me. Never, ever, ever. I want them to know there's a place to talk to daddy, to run to daddy, amen, because that's a father's heart. Every one of you out there feel that same way about your children. Imagine our jaded love versus the father's love. Mm -hmm. He wants to fill you and work in your life. The Bible says that they begin to speak with other tongues. You look down through here, Parthians, the Medes, Elamites, uh, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judah, uh, Cappadocia, uh, to Pontus, to Asia. Uh, all these individuals, as you read verse number 9 through verse number 11, I won't read all of them, but all of a sudden they're around and they begin, Brother David, like you said, they begin to hear these people speaking in another tongue, and it's their language. But, 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 and they said that they were amazed. Translated means this, that they were perplexed that they would hear these individuals speaking in their language because these were just Galileans. What do they know about other languages? Amen. But when the Spirit of God gets in, Brother David, I appreciated your testimony this morning. Amen. That's the, uh, the man who began to pray and speak in tongues and all of a sudden in a native language. Amen. Some years ago, I met a lady. She was in her hundreds. She had lived a, a very godly life. And I was honored in the last few uh, months of her life to, to visit with her. A wonderful black lady who had a great ministry. And, 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 and Brother Walt, I was with her. And I prayed with her. And all of a sudden, this lady, 101 years old, her hands start flying in the air. Her legs start going back and forth. And then Sister Rachel, she starts speaking in another language. Amen. It was the Holy Ghost. You know what? kept her and helped her for 101 years. It was the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And if He's good enough to keep someone for 101 years, He's good enough to keep every one of us and the church. Mm -hmm. The only way the church is going to go on is by the move of the Spirit. He said, I will pour my Spirit out upon all flesh. You may say, Brother Seville, but, but I don't understand a lot of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Brother Seville, I'm not that educated. Brother Seville, I'm too educated for that. You know, the Word of God says everyone. Every geographical location in Africa, in the Philippines, uh, Puerto Rico, in America, anywhere, anybody, God's Spirit desires to fill them. Mm -hmm. He will pour Spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters. That means men. That means women. Male, female. God desires to pour His Spirit on them. And He said, And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Now, I don't, I don't want anyone to lose out with me this morning, but in my better understanding of this and studying, amen, that this young man and old man, there's not they designated for certain things for each, but each of them can have dreams and have visions. Mm -hmm. Let me share something with you. I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I'm just going to share it with you. I can't even tell you what night it was this week. I was in a church the other day. I'd never been to the church before. I was a visitor. My wife and my girls were sitting there. But I know that, that dream, my heart was just longing, but it is for God.